President Zuma to address the Eastern Cape ANC Centenary Rally and the Nicholson Inquiry into Cricket South Africa to resume next week. With the news at 9 o'clock, good morning. I'm Garabo Malazzi. Hundreds of ANC members and supporters are expected to attend the Eastern Cape ANC Centenary Rally to be addressed by President Jacob Zuma at East London's APSA Stadium later this morning. The provincial celebrations follow the National Centenary Rally, which was held on the 8th of January in Mangawung. The ANC celebrations will continue for the whole year in all nine provinces. This week, it's the turn of the Eastern Cape. During the week, the ANC held an interdenominational prayer service dedicated to the role played by churches in the formation of the ANC and the liberation struggle. The Nicholson Inquiry into Cricket South Africa will meet again next week when the committee hears a submission from Judge Mervyn King. King, a former Supreme Court judge, chaired the King Committee on Corporate Governance. The Nicholson Inquiry was announced by Sports Minister Figilem Balula after auditing firm KPMG found that bogus payments had been kept secret from the Federation's Remuneration Committee and that Cricket South Africa's Chief Executive Gerald Majola had breached the Companies Act on at least four occasions. The United Nations has warned of a worsening humanitarian emergency in South Sudan as a result of weeks of tribal fighting. It now estimates that more than 120,000 people need help, doubling the previous figure. The BBC's Barbara Plett reports from the UN. Two weeks ago, the UN launched an emergency operation to help 60,000 people displaced by tribal fighting over ongoing cattle raids between the Lao Nuer and Merle tribes in Jonglei State. At that time, the Lao Nuer had launched a massive attack, but the violence has continued with reprisal attacks by the Merle. Because of this, the UN's regional humanitarian coordinator, Lees Grande, says 120,000 people now desperately need help. Three Muslim men have been found guilty of stirring up hatred against the gay community in Britain. They've distributed leaflets which argued for the death penalty to rid society of gay men and women. From Derby, the BBC's Bob Walker has more. This was the first prosecution under legislation making it a crime to stir up hatred on the grounds of sexual orientation. The three men distributed leaflets featuring a mannequin hanging from a noose alongside the phrase the death penalty. A number of gay men who had leaflets delivered to their homes said they felt targeted and threatened. But the defendants argued they had a religious duty to condemn and to challenge homosexual lifestyles. Still in international news, the British government is increasing funding to fight what are known as the neglected tropical diseases. It's pledged $380 million over four years. The BBC's Sophie Hutchinson reports. Every year, a billion people are affected by what are known as neglected tropical diseases and more than half a million die from them. These infections, which hit the poorest parts of the world, don't attract as much attention as malaria or HIV, but can cause just as much suffering. Compared to the overall budget for Britain's National Health Service of more than $155 billion, and that's just for one year, this is small, not even 1%. But experts say it should be able to help 140 million people suffering from diseases such as river blindness, bilharzia and elephantiasis. And finally, a Swedish church is attracting a younger congregation by staging services featuring techno music. The services at Stockholm's All Saint Church with the idea of Vika Ole Edelström. He sees them as a way of boosting dwindling congregations by attracting younger churchgoers. Based on a traditional mass, they replace hymns with especially written modern dance tunes. And they're proving highly popular with young Christians literally dancing in the aisles.